the other thing is I know we're running out of time. I just want to just give a couple of examples of where we also need to recognize when we're working on the water issue is strong connection to other issues. And if we want to achieve our goals, we have to be affecting other issues. Or if we want to be responsible when we talk about water, we have to also be thinking about our impact on other, other issues. And one of them is energy. And I think most, I'm sure we're all very aware of the negative impacts that different methods of energy generation can have in terms of water quality and or water flows and you know hydropower plants uh, you know affecting water flows or contamination uh, Teresa just referred to you know radiation and so on from nuclear power plants you know mercury out of coal plants which ends up falling down into the water and, and contamination we also need to reverse that we also need to look and say when we as a community are making a decision about how we're going to get our water supply, how we're going to move it around our communities and so on, what impact is that having on energy use? And when you look at municipal budgets, the electricity bill in municipalities, the part of it that goes to pumping water, both getting water to industry and the households and getting water from there to the sewage treatment plant, is taking around 30% of the electricity bill for municipalities, and it varies by different ways in which you operate your system. That's huge. And so what you see is that if we're making bad decisions on how to get our water distributed and around, we then escalate the need for energy, which then escalates the, the climate change issues, which gets us back to climate change, what that does to water supply, and, and that endless cycle in there. I live in Waterloo Region, for example, and Waterloo Region says, okay, you know, we want to grow through, now the province has told us we have to grow, uh, with wonderful places to grow, we're one of those. And uh, therefore, to get enough water because of groundwater limitations, uh, we need to build a pipeline down to Lake Erie. In their assessments of that, and they've done their assessments of, the, of that, there is no assessment at all of they only say what the energy costs are to pump that water up, which will be substantial to get it from Lake Erie. And they don't include that as an issue or a question. What does that mean in terms of the need to be generating more energy by the province? You know, one of the outcomes of Walkerton, for example, is to talk about integrating systems. Makes sense. But one of the impacts of that, of course, is more pumping. And again, what are the energy implications? So I think it's really important that when we're talking about energy issues and we're talking about um, we need to be making energy decisions in terms of the negative impacts of different types of energy generation can have on water, but we equally, as people who care about <coughs> water, have a responsibility to make sure that the decisions we make in terms of how to get our water, where to take our water from, is taking into account what that means for energy use and what that thing may take and need in terms of generating more energy. So it's a prime example in my mind of where we can't be keeping what we consider different policy issues separate. We have to be taking energy and water together. I'll give you another really quick, simple example because we're running out of time. It's one you probably wouldn't think of connecting in the way in which, which I am, which is the waste issue and municipal garbage. And when we think of that in terms of water impact, we generally think of it in terms of leaking dump sites or you know, it's garbage incinerators that you know, send out contamination into the air that can fall out onto the water. But the more dramatic impact in terms of our generating too much garbage is the impact upon the water because of <coughs> our need to use more raw materials to make products because we wasted these valuable used materials. So what we need to be moving towards is a zero waste society <coughs> in order to protect water. You know, and you've all seen the statistics, I'm sure, in terms of if you compare how much it takes to make an aluminum can, for example, out of um, recycled cans in comparison with making it from raw materials, bauxite, etc the additional amount, how many times more water it takes to make that, 
and also how much more um, pollution is generated in terms of that production process in comparison with the production process that doesn't start with raw materials. I'll just give you a couple examples in terms of the paper industry. Uh, making cardboard, for example. If you make cardboard starting from the raw tree, it discharges 70 times more phosphorus into waterways. 70 times more phosphorus into waterways than if you made it from uh, recycled uh, cardboard, recycled paper, and the recycling process. Um, steel, if you make steel from scrap iron, 80 times more water pollution if you make it from raw materials in comparison with making it from scrap iron. So I think one of the things you know, we need to be pushing for is to say we need to be pushing for waste policies that take into account the wasted resources which mean we generate more water pollution in the production process than we would be otherwise. So it's just another example of the need to be making connections between issues if we really want to take care in a serious way of the water problems that we can face. <coughs> so I just wanted to you know, throw some of those ideas out. It's the, that need to be thinking uh, beyond in that, that perspective which says what are the links between these and how do we push our governments, push ourselves first, but push our governments to make sure that they're thinking about what are the impacts of decisions that they may think are totally unrelated to the water problem. What are the impacts on that on water? And so that every time some other program decision is being made, the impact upon water is being thought about, even though it may not have been logically at the top of their heads to think that that could have a negative meaning for water. But likewise, for people who are focused on the water issue, we need to make sure that we, when we're deciding how to use water and how to get water to the various places we want to go, to be thinking about, will that have negative impacts on other sorts of issues that we're trying to deal with? So I'll close it up there. I know we're almost at 5 o'clock and people are anxious to get going.